Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Sun newspaper and industries. I do have a separate video for the Sun newspaper and audiences as well as for media language and representation so please check out those videos if you need them. For the industries topic and newspapers you're going to need to know quite a lot of factual information about the Sun. So the Sun is published in the UK by a company called News UK. News UK is a subsidiary of a larger company which is called News Corp. News Corp is a massive global conglomerate owned and run by Rupert Murdoch who is a billionaire and so it is a very large company with a lot of resources and a lot of funding. News UK publish a number of other newspapers including The Times and The Sunday Times. News Corp operate across a range of industries including newspapers, TV news, TV and even in the past film as well. So they really are a diversified global conglomerate with a lot of power. It's important for the publishers of The Sun to make sure that they have more than one stream of revenue. So yes, people can buy the paper and they will make money from the people buying the paper, but there have to be more ways of them making money. So have a look through the issue of the newspaper and the website and, and try and understand if there are any other methods that they have used where it encourages the readers to spend money. For example, it does cost money to sign up to the Sun Dating website if you want to be able to respond to messages. It does cost money if you want to join the Sun Bingo website because you are going to need to put money into your kind of account online in order to gamble. There are also lots of premium rate telephone numbers to call inside of the newspaper where you will get charged an extortionate amount of money from your mobile phone to make that call. These additional um, avenues for revenue are important in order to keep the business afloat. It's also important to try and encourage your readers to buy the paper not just once but again and again. So putting your puzzle answers in the following day's edition so people have to buy the next day's paper in order to get the answers is quite an interesting way of doing that. Also they often advertise the following day's paper uh, in that, that day's edition or a paper from later on in the week. So for example in this um, particular example they're advertising a free gift that comes in another edition of the newspaper later on in the week and that's a good way of trying to encourage your readers of that particular day's newspaper to buy it again and again. If you are a diversified company like News Corp where you produce a range of content across a range of platforms, then you need to take advantage of that. For example, The Sun is owned by News UK. News UK um, also operate a few radio stations, including uh, Talk Radio. And Talk Radio is actually featured as an advert inside this edition of The Sun newspaper. So what they're doing is they're cross-promoting another product that they own. And this cross-promotion of products uh, by the one company is a really great way of marketing the other things that you make and hopefully encouraging people to um, listen to that radio station and therefore gradually increasing your, your readership or your listenership of all of your products and therefore increasing your revenue. It's important for a company like News Corp to protect its reputation and to ensure that its products um, have a good brand identity and are respected within the market. Because the company is based around stocks and shareholders, it means that they need to protect their reputation and to ensure that their newspapers don't create any bad publicity for them. Now, this has happened in the past. News Corp was found to have been involved across several of its newspapers, including The Sun, The Times and The News of the World, which was a newspaper that used to exist, um, to have participated in something called the phone hacking scandal. Please look it up if you want some more information. But essentially, it meant that the editors of these newspapers had illegally and immorally uh, hacked into people's phones, um, celebrities, the royal family, and even dead children, in order to try and get better news stories. And this caused a huge scandal. In particular, uh, the News of the World, which is also owned and run by News Corp at the time, um, 
was heavily found to be involved in this and it created a lot of bad publicity for them. Other newspapers were uh, writing scathing articles about them and their ethics or their lack of ethics and this caused them a lot of problems and they realised they had to do something which is known as damage control and that means doing something drastic to try and reduce the bad publicity and to try hopefully and retain the value of your other newspapers. So because the News of the World was the paper at the time that had seemed to be most involved with the phone hacking scandal, News Corp made a decision to shut down the News of the World. So they physically ended the newspaper, they issued an apology, they said goodbye to their readers on their last front cover and they closed the newspaper down. And they did that to try and calm down all these audiences that were so angry at the newspapers and their the company that ran them. So they closed down the News of the World to to protect the reputation of the Sun and the Times and, and their other products. You do need to know a bit about regulation for the newspaper industry. The Sun belongs to a regulator called Ipso. Ipso are a newspaper-led regulatory body. They are um, a company which is designed to try and make sure that newspapers follow rules, follow the law, don't publish anything unethical or immoral or uh, or lies, you know, slander, libel. Um, and so um, Ipso have the power to issue sanctions and fines to newspapers that break these rules. And this is a company that was set up um, in response to um, the phone hacking scandal that happened many years ago. It's worth understanding, though, that newspapers um, kind of belong to this regulatory body um, because they feel as though they have to, to, to show on the surface that they are following the rules. But actually, the power that the company Ipso has is, um, is not as great as you like to think maybe it could be. If a newspaper breaks one of their regulations or says something that's incorrect and Ipso finds that they have broken a rule, um, they can ask or demand that the Sun issues an apology. The Sun has ways of getting around this. So often they will print their apologies in very small writing and they will bury the apology at the back of the newspaper or somewhere where they think most people won't read it. If they're asked to print the apology online or publish the apology online, they will publish it on their website late at night when uh, less people are reading. So um, they have ways of trying to minimise bad publicity. If they are told that they have to publish the apology on their front cover, they will often still publish the apology quite small. So um, whilst they do follow some of the basic regulations from Ipso, um, the Sun has ways and means of perhaps getting round some of these regulations. In fact, the newspapers in general seem to be more worried about what their audiences think than about what companies and regulatory boards like Ipso think. So, for example, it's worth having a little read about the Hillsborough disaster and how the Sun reported on that. They designed their headlines to blame the football fans who were completely innocent and um, it made the people who were involved in the incident, as well as many other people around the country, very, very angry. They, uh, the readers felt that the Sun were being incredibly unfair, that they were reporting in an immoral fashion, that they were ignoring the facts. And actually, whilst the regulatory board at the time, the PCC, didn't do very much about um, the sun and its headlines to do with the Hillsborough disaster, the readers started their own campaigns. They boycotted the newspaper. They refused to buy it. In fact, in Liverpool, the sun is still often thought of as being a very controversial newspaper and most shops won't even sell it, let alone for readers to actually buy it. Um, so um, readers actually have quite a lot of power and the Sun are more worried about what they think. So when they realised how angry their readers were about their reporting of the Hillsborough disaster, they actually issued a very public apology covering the, the whole of their front cover. And they have continued since then to try and report on that story in a much more accurate and fair way because they're so scared about upsetting their readers again. So in actual fact, in terms of regulation, the audience do quite a good job of regulating newspapers for some stories. However, regulation for newspapers with the advent of new technologies has become incredibly hard. 
Um, if you have a think about a newspaper website, there are lots of opportunities for audiences to leave comments, to like and to share. Also on their social media pages, people can comment as well. For a newspaper to control everything that people say on their website is very difficult. And of course, some of the rules and regulations are that they shouldn't have anything that is racist or homophobic or sexist or um, transphobic, Islamophobic, etc. Um, and so hate speech is quite difficult for them to control. They have control over the content of their articles, both in print and online. But in the comments section, you will often find some quite controversial comments from their readers who aren't afraid to push the boundaries and be blunt and say exactly what they think. There are several ways in which The Sun and the company that publishes The Sun, News UK, can go about actually um, trying to control these comments. One thing that they might do is have bots or algorithms um, digitally checking the comments on their website that readers leave. Now, this means that a kind of a computer program is checking through the comments. Now, the only way this can be done is programming the algorithms to look for certain words. So to look for certain hate speech words um, or certain trigger words that might make the algorithm think that something illegal or controversial has been said. And they will then block that comment from being posted or they might censor the comment in some way. Um, so they are using technology to help to regulate their newspapers. However, there are a number of issues for this. Um, an algorithm, being that it's a kind of computer program, can't detect context. So they can't tell if somebody is joking or being sarcastic. They don't know if somebody is just quoting what somebody else has said. Um, and so um, algorithms are not a perfect way of trying to regulate your newspaper website. So in addition, they also have human moderators. Now, human moderators are good at detecting context for the most part, but it's virtually impossible for a human moderator to get through the huge number of comments that get posted on their website on specific articles. Some articles, you might get tens of thousands of comments within a matter of hours, and there is no way that a human moderator would be able to go through all of those comments. So it's only by combining the human moderator with the algorithms um, that you can try and ensure the regulation of your, your newspaper website. Even then, readers have found very... Uh, Hmm, clever ways of getting around these regulations. So some readers will um, star out their swear words or they will put spaces or numbers or letters or symbols within their trigger or hate speech words that they're using. So if they want to use a racist term, they are starring it out or putting spaces in or rephrasing it, or they're simply not using the words which they know will trigger a, um, a blocking of the comment, but they are skirting around the word, but still managing to be incredibly offensive. Um, and so um, audiences have found ways of getting around online regulations of newspapers. And actually on their social media pages, you will find a huge number of comments which are virtually unregulated because there are no real regulations that, that control Facebook or Twitter. And so newspaper companies are not bound by those laws of IPSO on their social media pages. I think sometimes they do what they can because they don't want anyone to leave a comment which is going to get the newspaper itself in a huge amount of trouble. But at the same, uh, in the same way, they want their readers to feel as though they have freedom to say what they feel. And so you will often find much more controversial and even hugely offensive comments on The Sun's newspapers, Facebook and Twitter pages. And don't forget as well, companies sometimes don't want to regulate everything. They sometimes don't mind if some of their articles or comments are controversial because it's the controversial articles that get more uh, views online that get more people reading them in the newspaper. So sometimes the more shocking or outrageous something is, the better. And they know that. And so newspapers um, kind of tread this fine line between saying that they're controlling what people are, are writing and commenting on and showing that they've belonged to IPSO and that they're doing what they can to follow rules, but also pushing the boundaries as much as they can in terms of shocking or offensive content um, in order to attract more and more readers. Whilst News UK and News Corp are an incredibly successful conglomerate, um, The Sun is actually making a loss um, last year, The Sun posted losses of £91 million, so they're not actually making a profit from the printed newspaper at all. 
Um, and I suppose it might be useful to think about the fact that they might be able to still carry on printing that newspaper at a loss because they are such a large company with such a huge amount of money. It gives them the power to take risks, to carry on printing products that are making a loss because they are able to make that money back from perhaps their other products. Some people might ask, why bother? Um, the printed newspaper might well be making a loss in terms of money, but the, I suppose the idea is that it is still the most popular newspaper in Britain. So News UK, News Corp might still carry on printing it because it could attract advertisers, because they hope that one day the readership will go back up, because they're still earning extra money and revenue from advertising online and from their other revenue streams like the premium rate phone numbers, the sun dating, the sun bingo, so perhaps although the printed newspaper itself is making a loss, it's worth carrying on and still printing it because there are other ways of them making money. Newspaper circulation has been declining quite rapidly over the last few years. Many people think this is because of the introduction and development of new convergent technologies such as social media. More and more people are going online to get their news because it's easier, it's mostly free, it's accessible, it's portable and it's instant. The way that newspapers are published means that the printing process and the process of distributing the print newspapers to shops around the country, that means that newspapers are often at least several hours out of date by the time they actually get into a reader's hands. And so many audiences find that frustrating. If something big happens, they have to wait till the following day in a printed newspaper to get hold of that news. So many newspapers now um, have developed their own websites or online editions that can be subscribed to via apps as well. Um, and this is to compete with those social media sites. Most newspapers also have um, social media pages as well. So, for example, The Sun does have a Twitter page and a Facebook page. And that is to try and make sure that they are using social media to target those national and global audiences who are spending more and more time online. Because the print circulation is declining, it means their profits are declining. But having a website for a newspaper means that they can use the space on their web pages as advertising space as well. And they can offer digital advertising to other brands. And that opens up another stream of revenue for them too. Don't forget, if you want more information about The Sun and audiences for your GCSE exam, please check out my separate video for that topic.